So welcome, welcome once again for, uh, you know, another crypto class covering what what I love to do here uh, as it relates to creating and, uh, you know, the subject matter of cryptocurrency and NFT. So um, but we're going to start today a little bit different. Um, I know, you know, the past or 10 weeks that we've been giving these classes like I've been doing more of an instructional base PowerPoint presentation type ordeal, but I want to go into a more uh, interactive like feel in these classes because I, I feel like we have like somewhat of a foundation of information out there now. So um, going forward, we're going to have more, you know, demonstrations or partic participation like classes where it's a little bit more interactive. But um, today's topic is creating your own NFT collection and uploading it to the OpenSea platform, right? But before we get into that, I just want to show y'all, and I'm not going to go into no crazy technical analysis, but as you can see, like Bitcoin has, you know, significantly, not significant, it has, you know, created some higher highs here, some higher lows. Um, we still got this bear flag in play right now, but um, so I do foresee us still trending downward. Uh, it just may not happen immediately. So, and as you may or may not know, uh, Bitcoin is, is hinged to all, or I should say all of the altcoins are hinged to the price action of Bitcoin. So like, the last few days you saw like Ethereum or Ethereum Classic, they've taken like, I think Ethereum Classic went up like 30, 40% the past few days. Uh, and that's like really, I don't know, it, it, it really went up for no reason because Ethereum Classic is, is like practically obsolete, but um, it was hanging on the coattails of Ethereum and Ethereum's going up because, and we'll go to Ethereum real quick, because it's actually the reason why the market started to trend. And you can see Ethereum created, at first it was consolidating here, and this is the day chart. So it was cons consolidating for the most part, and then it we got, we got four white soldiers here, set of three. So we started to trend upward. We broke above these two resistance levels and, you know, we trended to the upside. But, um, yeah, so Ethereum, for the most part, it's been trending up in preparation for the Ethereum merge that's been dated to happen in September. Uh, I believe the date was September 19th. Don't quote me on that, but it's... Um, it's at towards the end of September. So with that being said, uh, I spoke about this a little bit um, in our class last week when I was talking about crypto mining. So this is a this is likely one of the most significant events in crypto history and its short history. This merge um, because it's Ethereum and it's moving from. A protocol of proof of work, which that was the initial protocol that um, all the cryptocurrency, uh, well, Bitcoin began with. And then, you know, we have these other protocols, proof of stake, proof of consensus, proof of coverage, proof of all these other protocols, right? So Ethereum is making this transition from proof of work to proof of stake. Now, like I said, this this could be a make or break uh, event for not only Ethereum, but, you know, a lot of the crypto, well, all of the cryptocurrencies that are uh, built upon crypto, on, built upon Ethereum. Um, but this also could affect the other blockchains that utilize smart contracts. So that would be Cardano, that would be um, Luna and... <laughs> It really ain't a blockchain no more. Uh, Phantom, Solana. So it, it could all affect them also. 
uh, if this doesn't go well. So at the end of the day, everybody should be rooting for Ethereum to do well. But even though I do expect it not to go uh, seamlessly. So with that being said, whether it's, you know, I, I believe it will happen. I do believe that the uh, merge will happen, but I don't think it'll happen seamlessly. And with that being said, I do foresee that being another catalyst for us to possibly trend downward because um, FUD will happen. Like Cardano had their uh, move to proof of stake last year, I believe. And I think Cardano ran up to like $3 or some change. And it hasn't been that high since then. Uh, so, but we're going to keep it moving, man. I want to get to the topic. Like I said, we're going to cover uh, how to create these NFT collections, but I wanted to give y'all a quick update of what the market is doing. Don't look at this as we have a complete reversal. Like the timing isn't even correct for us to go back into an uptrend, into a bull market. We still have a lot of time left to, uh, to see downward pressure or consolidate even more so but let's keep moving man so the first step that i need everyone to do and like i said we're gonna do everything together i want everyone to go to if you're on your laptop that's desktop um pull up metamask.io and what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be downloading the metamask um wallet to our brave browser or google chrome or whatever browser you're using all of them will work but um this is the first thing that we're going to do so we're going to go to metamask.io you can see it up here at the top of my screen and you should see somewhere in this region it'll say download for whatever your browser is i like i said i recommend the brave browser so we're going to click on that download for brave all right, so now you're not actually gonna download the application. All you're gonna be doing is adding an extension to your Brave browser or whatever browser you utilize. So the next thing you're gonna do, and y'all let me know if I'm going too fast or you trying to catch up, uh, just chime in, you know, comment or hit me in the chat. I'll be trying to keep up with that. But next thing you're gonna do is hit add to Brave. So, it's going to prompt you with, with all this here. You're going to say, yes, add extension. Give it a second. Give it a second. Um, let me know if y'all having any issues. I get error messages. If y'all do get error messages, I'll be honest with you. I've not had any error messages. So, so I won't be able to assist you um, too much, but I'll try to, you know, try to help you figure it out. So, all right. So now, MetaMask is added to my Brave browser, right? And I'm going to click Get Started. All right, so we're going to do this thing fresh. So if you have a MetaMask wallet, you don't have to go through these steps uh, to, you know, connect your wallet to the browser here. You can actually go here and say, no, I already have a secret recovery phrase and import, import your uh, secret key. But we're going to do this thing you know, fresh. We're going to start it right here. and We're going to say create a wallet. So I speak about this a lot. And um, I tell y'all, when you create a DeFi wallet, any of these, even a, um, a, a hard wallet, you want to always ensure that you do not lose your secret keys. Um, so same thing in this scenario when we're trying to upload these NFTs or we have NFTs within our uh, wallet. Do not lose your secret key because no key, no cheese. No key, no NFTs. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. All right, we're going to hit I agree. It said blah, blah, blah. Help us improve MetaMask. MetaMask will always allow you to opt. Blah, 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 blah. Never collect keys, addresses, transactions, balance hatches hashes or any personal information, blah, blah, blah. I agree, right? We gonna create a password. Let's, 
go ahead and create a password that you're not gonna forget. You likely want to write this down uh, also, but not on the device that you're utilizing because your device can be hacked and they can find your password, find your keys, and then they'll have everything. So let me see, I'm gonna make this. We're gonna make this. All right, it gotta be at least eight characters. All right, cool. I got mine in. I have read and agreed to the terms used, hit create. All right, and this is where we're going to our secret phrase. This is likely a video telling you how to secure your wallet. Uh, like I mentioned here uh, before, it says, how do I save my secret recovery phrase? Save in a password manager, store in a bank vault, store in a safe deposit box, write down and store in multiple secret places. Please do, please do one of these at minimum. But for this, uh for this um class because i don't care anything about this wallet i'm going to be putting my stuff here in a notepad do not do this as a practice on a, <laughs> for your uh for your actual assets okay so hit next and then I click here and it reveals my secret phrase. So this is my phrase. Do not utilize this phrase that you see on the screen for your own, um, for whatever reason. Like it's, it's not gonna be beneficial for you right now because after this, I'm gonna be moving these assets out. But all right, so I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna go to my notepad. I'm going to drop my phrase here and I have, right? Let's keep it moving. Y'all let me know if I'm going too fast or even too slow. All right. So I got my phrase. Let's keep it moving. Now I got to put it back in order, right? So we got alcohol, dice, praise, rapid. Alcohol, dice, praise, rapid. Useful chair wine useful chair wine absurd chase outdoor donor absurd chase outdoor donor farm cool confirm all right now we in our wallet so now cool we have our wallet <clears throat> um one thing i want to show y'all if y'all never utilize metamask so your assets will display your under the assets tab this will is where your cryptocurrencies will display. So like you, as you buy more cryptocurrencies or send crypto to this wallet, they'll all display here. Um, you can see any activity that you may have had within the wallet as we have any transactions, you'll see all that here. Um, I don't see where we can display the NFTs, but I'll pull that up later. I'll try to pull that up later. All right, so <clears throat> cool. Everything looks good. Ethereum mainnet. This this lets you know the blockchain that you're on. So the MetaMask wallet is a multi-chain wallet. Like I mentioned that before we started uh, the class, um, if we have enough time, I will show y'all how to add the Polygon network to this wallet. And you'll be able to, if you like, upload NFTs or NFT collection on a Polygon blockchain or OpenSea, you can do that completely free. Like everything is free, even listing the NFT uh, for sale in which it costs to list your NFT for sale on the Ethereum blockchain. But let's keep rolling. So you can create multiple wallets within the MetaMask wallet. So you can import a wallet you already have because you already have the application uploaded. Uh, you can connect a hardware wallet like the, the Ledger or uh, Trezor. So yeah, MetaMask is dope on laptop 
or the desktop, but the mobile version is not your best friend. But let's keep moving. So, all right, so I don't need that, but I cannot see this. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to OpenSea. All right, so the next step, I want y'all to pull up OpenSea.io. Right, OpenSea.io. Y'all give me a, y'all give me a yes, a, a one, or something in the chat to let me know y'all still following along and y'all right here, uh, y'all at OpenSea.io. Appreciate it, Lauren. Appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, Jordan, for the something. <laughs> Who's that mail? All right, appreciate it, appreciate it, Moody, Freddie. Jordan, again, with thumbs up and a smile. Matthew, appreciate it. All right, let's go. So, all right, the next thing you're going to do, you're going to click on this little billfold wallet looking thing, right? You're going to click on that. And now that you have your MetaMask wallet connected to your, your extension connected to your browser, I want you to click on MetaMask right here. It should automatically prompt you to connect to OpenSea after that. Y'all let me know if y'all have any issues. My computer is slow. That is my issue. It's acting real slow. Come on now. Let's go, girl. <clears throat> waiting on you. Waiting on you. Waiting on you. All right, we're going to try that again. Hit the wallet. Hit the MetaMask. And we got nothing yet. So what I'm going to do, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to click off. If anybody else is having, hold on. Woodline said, where did I click? So if you see this little wallet, icon in the top right hand corner i want you to click on that and select metamask in the drop down let me know if y'all see that i'm having issues but so in the brave browser you can check up here this little puzzle piece looking icon you could check here and see if you're like my metamask is here so i shouldn't be having any issues um but give me a sec. I'm going to refresh my page and I'm going to try this again. All right. So as it loads up, like I said, my computer is extremely slow at times. But I'm going to hit that again. Hit MetaMask and bam. All right. My MetaMask wallet starting to populate. All right. Cool. Will line, you good? Cool. Anybody else having any issues or gotten to this point and or didn't see this notification pop up? Y'all let me know in the chat. All right, so next, you're gonna hit next to go ahead and connect your wallet. Hit connect. It's interacting with uh, OpenSea. Close this thing on my screen. Hit accept and sign, saying that you agree to OpenSea's policy. You can go read that if you want to. I'm not. All right, you're going to scroll down, hit sign, and bam, we have no money in this wallet. All right, so um, if you already, if you began this with the wallet already, um, that, that already had assets in it, already had Ethereum in it, you would already see, you would see your balance here with Ethereum inside. But for the time being, we don't need to do anything with the Ethereum, um, the $50. Like I said earlier, you only need Ethereum to place your item for sale, not to create. So we're going to keep it moving because we don't need any bucks to make that happen. So let's go to my fault. So you see your little icon right next to the wallet. This is like your profile picture or whatever. All right, Woodline said he did add the $50. All right, cool, bro. 
we'll um I'll show you how to place a well place an item for sale also, um, and we'll see what the gas fees are if you intend to actually place an item for sale. Uh, but we'll get there in a second. So, like I said, you see this little icon here. This pulls up a drop down for your profile favorites, watch list, blah blah blah. We're gonna select my collections. When you pull it up, you won't have any collections there. So we're gonna select. <clears throat> create a collection right y'all let me know if y'all there give me a uh give me a one in the chat if y'all all are here on this page create a collection cool 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 we got them ones we got those ones cool all right now We're going to start adding or creating our collection. So first thing we're going to do is start uploading our different images. So the first image is going to be like your, it's your main logo. So it's almost like a profile picture, right? So click on the center of it and it'll prompt you to add a, a image, right? So the image that I'm going to upload, this is a AI generated collection that I created. And um, this collection is called, um, I, what I'm going to call it, Genesis Block. So it is a depiction of Satoshi Nakamoto mining the first Bitcoin. And all of these images are, are AI generated depiction of that. So I'm just going to choose one of these and make them my logo. You can make your logo whatever you want. Uh, but I'm going to utilize this. That'll be one of my logos or the profile picture logo. Going to open that same thing and I'm going to use, say, this one. This will be one of my other uh, banner images or homepage images. And this will be the banner that sits at the top of my screen. I'm gonna utilize this one. It looks like a guy in a mine, mining <laughs> something. Look like money. I don't know. It's pretty dope the way it came out. So I'm gonna name this um, Satoshi's. This is the name of the collection. So this is where you're gonna display the name of your collection, right? I'm gonna name this Satoshi's genesis block because that's the the idea i might keep this collection oh no i might keep it right but that's gonna be the name of my um uh, <laughs> lauren say fancy yeah i know right but yeah that's gonna be the name of my collection make yours how you want it right now this is where you're gonna name your url so i'm gonna do the same here Satoshi Genesis block, right? Hopefully nobody got that already. It's valid, it's available. So now I'm gonna give a description. description. So my description is this collection is an AI generated one of one depiction of Satoshi Nakamoto's first mind Bitcoin block. Also, known as the genesis block I'm, I'm gonna keep this man i might have to change my uh wallet information because it's gonna be recorded for the world to see but i might keep this actual collection so this collection is an ai generated one-of-one -one depiction of satoshi nakamoto's first mind bitcoin block also known as the genesis block cool right make your description whatever you want it to be uh for your collection um, but now we're going to move towards 
add in a category. So what would this fit in? I would say it would fit in art, right? It doesn't have, it could be a collectible, but it's more so art. It's not music, photography, and it has no utility, trading cards, sports, none of that. It is art, simply that. I don't have a website, but for this case, we're going to say my website is called Genesis Block dot io i don't know if this is gonna let me uh push through with this but i'm gonna just put some stuff in here you don't have to put anything here if you don't have this information but i'm gonna put it for now you can always come back and change it, right uh my discord i'm not gonna put that because like i said you can come back and change all this however you want right i'm just putting some stuff this doesn't actually connect to these accounts to notify the individual that you're connected. If it's a con if it's an account that's like um, not yours, like this Genesis Block .io, this could be an actual website, but I'm just gonna use it for now, and I'll change it later. Um, but yeah, you have all these options that have links that correlate to your collection, whether you have an actual website. You have a Discord server, Instagram, Medium, or a Telegram page. So for now, I'm just putting those two, right? This is the point in where I try to explain to people who create um, art in various fashions, whether it be, you know, painting, drawing, music. This is the option where you can be paid for the rest of your life and your children's lives and their lives after that. When I spoke about NFTs in the, in the classes a few, um, few weeks ago, I spoke about Van Gogh and how he never made a dollar for Van, I mean, for Starry Night, Starry Night, the painting Starry Night. Um, but if he had the ability to utilize nfts back then which the technology wasn't around um he could have set a royalty fee for that painting and his family could receive up to 10 percent for this platform anyway up to 10 percent every time that item is sold so starry night was i think it was just sold for last sold for hundreds of millions of dollars like his family could reap the benefits of uh, taxing or having a royalty fee for every time that thing is sold. So this is extremely important if you want to continue to earn from your collection once it's sold multiple times. So you may sell it, your first item for $20 and then your collection catches fire and the world is like, oh, I got to have one of those Genesis block Satoshi Nakamoto NFTs. Like, you could then go from selling all your NFTs from $20 to them being resold like Kanye's uh, sneakers for thousands of dollars, right? Or, you know what I'm saying? So, and you can reap the rewards of a 10%, a 10%, up to 10% fee for each sale. So for now, we're going to set it at the highest as it could be 10%. When this thing sell, I want it to sell. Uh, well, when it resells, I want a 10% fee every time it's sold so I can reap the maximum amount of benefit. So the next step, you want to drop the wallet that you want it paid out to. So you utilize the wallet or we just created a MetaMask wallet. So you can drop that same wallet address here and I'm gonna show y'all how to do that. So what you'll need to do is, <clears throat> excuse me. You see this icon here where it says extensions. Um, it may be different on other browsers, but you should be able to pull up your extension and you can select MetaMask and it'll pull up your MetaMask wallet. Let me give it a second. And you can come right here and hit copy. All right, and we're gonna plug in that wallet, Control V, right? 
So we have the wallet in there, the wallet address. So this is the wallet that you'll be paid to. You can put any wallet, as long as it's an Ethereum, um, Ethereum blockchain wallet address or ERC20 wallet address, right? So now, like I mentioned, we, we're operating on the Ethereum blockchain. Um, like I said, we have time. I will show y'all how to add the Polygon network to your MetaMask wallet. So you can potentially create a collection on Polygon for gas-free transactions. So I'll show y'all that also. But um, what I'll tell y'all also is Ethereum NFTs, they sell a lot more than the Polygon's blockchain. That's why I'm showing y'all Ethereum. Um, second to that is Solana. And then I will say likely Polygon, right? So next, you can add the tokens that you would want to be paid in. So these are default. So the, the difference between these two is this is the normal Ethereum that you would utilize on this uh, platform to buy or sell NFTs. But then the WTH, this is the Ethereum utilized if you wanted to bid on uh, or if you wanted somebody, if someone bid on one of your NFTs, like they would have to use wrapped Ethereum to do that, right? Um, which is a whole nother story, but let's keep it moving. So here you can add a token. What I always do is because the eight token is highly popular, I add it. There's a lot of people that got eight out there. Uh, some people may want to purchase in USDC, I add that too. Some people want to purchase and die, I add that. Um, the BAT token, we were speaking about that earlier. BAT is the token that you uh, earn by using the Brave browser, right? You could, um, you can utilize Gala, all these different tokens. So you can add whatever you want, but I'm just gonna add those for now and we're gonna keep it moving, all right? So you could choose these different layouts and how they'll display, how your, uh, how your um, collection will display to anybody that comes to your uh, collections profile. I always keep it here at contained. I've not utilized any of these other ones. I don't know if I would like this if my image displays small like this. So I just keep it with this one. You could use this one where it displays the entire background, but I just keep it simple with that one. So, and then we got here explicit, explicit or sensitive content. I don't know if you upload any any stuff like that, but you can check that if if it uh, if it applies to you. So let's keep moving though. We're gonna hit create. Let me know if y'all got there or not. Let me know if y'all get an error message after hitting create. I got an error message. So this happens often. Let me know if y'all got an error message in the chat. Give me a why in the chat if y'all got an error message like this also. Let me know if um, y'all got a notification that said created. Give me a why in the chat if y'all got a uh, notification saying that y'all collection was created also. So if this pops up, likely there is no issue, but I'm gonna show y'all how to get back there. So we're gonna click on OpenSea, the icon here. All right, cool, iPhones, I, iPhone said create it. So we're gonna click on OpenSea. Uh, it'll take us back to the main page. It'll likely wipe out this here. Let's see. Come on. Nope. Let me type it in again. Yeah, I've been getting that error message lately. All right, so it took me back to the main page. If y'all got that error message, type in openc.io again, and we're gonna tap. So our profile is connected again. Once you get an icon like this open up or pull up, you know you're still connected. So if it doesn't, then you'll have to go back to the wallet and select MetaMask, right? 
to get back into the uh to your your profile but mine popped up so we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna go back to my collections let me know if y'all are there so there's my collect my collection right i haven't added any nfts yet but this is just the collections like profile right so let me know i'm gonna stop here let me know if y'all are here give me a yes in the chat Give me a Y in the chat. I just need to know that y'all have a created collection. I just want to confirm that. iPhone told me created. Y'all let me know that y'all are actually on the screen before I move forward. Just give me a Y, give me a Y. I just want to make sure we all good. Brian says, why iPhone? Why? Cool, cool, cool. All right, I got a few whys. Give me an in if y'all are not, <laughs> so I can help you out um, to make sure y'all good. All right, we got our whys. We're going to keep it moving. All right, let's roll. Click on your collection. Right? So this is what it displays like. This is a little fuzzy, but we can fix that later, right? Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is upload our first NFT, which I don't see the thing. Give me a second. There you go. So on the far right side of the screen, you see these three dots, and I got a question. Give me a second. I'm following from my phone, so it's a little different, but I'm, all right, cool, Lou. Um, Lou, are you util, utilizing MetaMask or a different wallet? Because I know MetaMask can be a little, can be a little iffy on the phone sometimes. Um, on iPhone, anyway. On Android, it's a little better, but iPhone, it, it lags a lot. So just let me know. Okay, yeah, you might be good with Samsung. Cause it's a little iffy on iPhone, right? But next thing, click the three dots on the far right. Uh, let me know if y'all see that. And y'all should see add item, all right? Go ahead and click add item. And we're going to upload our first uh, NFT. So let's click that center of this image, right? And we're going to upload this first one called satoshi one this is the first edition of this collection i'm creating so we're going to give that item a name and i'm gonna name it actually i don't want to name it satoshi one i'm gonna name it uh genesis block one Do I, yeah, I'm gonna name it that Genesis Block One, right? Um, I don't have a website, um, so I'm gonna leave that blank for now, right? You can come back and edit all of this. The description for this item, I'm gonna copy and paste the description from the the main um, collection page. So let me open another window. All right. And I'm going to pull that collection up again. Y'all let me know if y'all follow. I don't want to confuse y'all. So I just want the description from here. I'm just going to copy it. And I'm put that description here. So I don't have to do some extra work. Uh, so now. We're going to scroll down. You can go into properties. Uh, if you had male character, you can identify specifics about each NFT that you add. So in this particular uh, NFT, I could describe it as a male, male, but in reality, Satoshi Nakamoto, nobody knows if it's a he, she, or they. So I'm going to leave this blank. Um, but if you are identifying each of your NFTs by specific traits, 
you would come here and add those different traits if it's a character or male or where however it may be um come down to levels do the same thing here i've not utilized any of these traits most of my uh nfts that i create they're all art and they don't really have um rarity levels but if you create a collection that some are more rare than others then you could come inside here and change some of the uh the specifics relating to the nft let's click on stats this is similar also so next thing you can go you can come here where it sells says unlockable content so unlockable content will be like um say you have out of all of your collection you have one nft that you want to give someone access to a thousand dollars i don't know or access to a, another cryptocurrency or DeFi wallet that has one ethereum in it um because you want to give back to the people who who own your collection so you can add unlockable content for the person who would purchase that nft so it could be really anything it could be music it could be like it says here access key code to redeem link to a file etc so but yeah that's what you would do if you wanted to add anything specific or special to a one of your nfts but for now we're not doing that we're gonna take that off um this goes back to what it said about explicit or sense of content if you had that, you click it on, but in my case, I don't. Um, so now you could come here and actually state the number or the supply in which you're gonna sell of each of your NFTs. So in my case, I want them to be one of one, but if you want, you can, how many can I put? Let's see. Oh, I can put a lot. I didn't even know that. How far can it go? So you can put as many of that particular NFT as you want, but I want it to be a supply of one. So I want it to be scarce, um, a one of one, right? And we're utilizing the Ethereum blockchain and that's it, right? Next thing you're gonna do is hit create. So I double checked, I got everything here. But like I said, you can come back here anytime and change the information that's here. Even you can even change the image that's displayed. You can change it anytime until you sell that NFT. Once you sell that NFT, you can no longer change the data that pertains to that NFT, right? So we're gonna hit create. All right, I'm gonna verify I'm not a robot. Bam, 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 bam. Cool. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. All right. Bicycle man. All right. I ain't never did this one. Cool. <laughs> Bam. So now I've created my first NFT in this collection you can if you want you can go share it on twitter facebook copy the link share wherever you want to to your family friends telegram whatever you want to do with it right but now i have my first nft displayed in the collection this is my genesis block one it's a little ugly dude look like he in coal mines mining gold but he mining bitcoin right so you can scroll down and you can you know, double check everything that you put in um, in the description to make sure everything is correct. Like mine says, this collection is an AI generated one-on-one -on -one depiction of Satoshi. See, I spelled his name wrong. Look at that. But I'm gonna show y'all. I can go edit this. One-on-one -on -one depiction of Satoshi. <laughs> Nakamoto's first mine Bitcoin block, also known as the Genesis block. So, like I said, we can go and edit that, but this is good that y'all seeing this so I can show y'all how to edit it and the 
and you want to always double check before they're sold, like I said, because once it sells, um, you will not be able to edit the information from that NFT because the blockchain is permanent, <laughs> right? So let's go and edit it. Let's go back in here. Let's, let's fix this man, woman, person's, people's name, Satoshi. All right, so it's good. You're going to submit that again. Lou said, what did you put for location? I didn't have an option for location. If you would like, if you can, uh, unmute yourself and tell me where you see location at. Hey, how's it going, man? How's it uh, going, bro? Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, it could be just the... Uh... I guess my version of it. Um, I was still able to create it uh, like you, but uh, I saw there's like a location area. Um, I left it blank and it still went through. So I was just curious, uh, like maybe I missed it when you did it or something. Oh, okay. But it went yeah. through. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I'm not sure specifically what location would describe. Maybe it describes your specific location um, mm. or where you are, but it's not a necessity. Like you don't have to put that in. Right. Gotcha. So I'm going to do one more. Um, I'm likely going to keep this collection. I'm just going to have to change like the information that correlates to the, to the actual address because all my little information is out there, but uh, let's go back and we're going to create another one. So I want y'all to go through it yourselves. I'm not going to just really, go into detail what I'm doing, but I want y'all to follow along still and go ahead and do it on your own. So let's go. <clears throat> go upload another one. Let me see one I like a little bit better. Yeah, I think I like this one. Bam, Satoshi 6. Yeah, Genesis block. And while I'm doing this, if y'all got any questions, um, feel free to unmute yourself, ask questions. Um, let me know how y'all like this so far. Um, will y'all be able to utilize this, the different ways that you can utilize creating the NFT collection? Like, it's, it's pretty limitless on what you can do with um, NFTs. And... Uh, Like if you own like a business or provide some type of membership, like there's so many different things. Or if you just want to create art, like or if you do music, like you can you can do this also. So like th these are all the files that are supported for um, NFT, JPEG, PNG, MP4. So you can upload videos. You can just upload sound. Uh, so MP3. So just keep that in mind like you can literally do anything <laughs> um as far as digital content when creating nfts for the most part so i didn't have this let me go back go back and copy this again my description bam i need to go fix that on the main page let me go do that now let y'all keep going. So I need to edit my collection name also. I mean, my collections um, profile page, because I spelled this wrong. Nope, I'm not connecting to Twitter. Submit changes. Oh, this is another thing. You can add a collaborator. So, like, uh, you, if you wanted someone else to reap the benefits of being paid because they assist, assisted in creating a NFT collection, like, you can distribute a specific amount, a specific amount of a, a payout to them. So, you would just drop their uh, wallet address there also. But I'm not doing that right now. So I got that updated. Go back. 
Satoshi's Genesis, Block, right? Minimize that one. Let me go back to creating this thing. Cool. Properties, levels, stats, same, same, same. It's pretty simple from there. Like, if you're not adding any of this information here, it's pretty simple. You just add the image, the name, your website, description, and you roll it. What is this? Oh, and you can specify. If you have multiple collections, you can specify the collection you want it to go to. But we hit and create. And this is the Genesis block two. They gonna check me again. Bam, bam, bam. Can you um? Can you edit the supply or, like you know, like a supply and demand? Like let's say something sells a lot. Could you could you could you go back and like, edit the supply before your last one sells, or you have to recreate a new one? Um. I do not know the answer to that question. I'll be honest with you. Um, but to my understanding, once that one sells, nothing can be edited. So uh, you can go and create another one with the same image and increase the supply by doing that. But I wouldn't recommend that. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I don't just me thinking about it. Once that item sells, so it's like, like I said, if you have one, once that item sells, it's, it's recorded on a blockchain, it's permanent. Like, you won't be able to change anything. Um, so adding to the collection or adding to that item, like, it's quantity. I highly, uh, I, I, I think that you likely won't be able to change it to increase the supply so you you would need to know that beforehand just make sure you know that like i want this to be a one-on-one or i potentially want this to be a one of a thousand right but yeah so i got two in there i'm not gonna bore y'all by adding each one uh unless y'all want me to go through the steps again um we still got you got 18 people on here. Y'all let me know if y'all got stuck anywhere. Um, y'all can even let me know in the chat. Like I can actually pull up the NFT collection that you created. What did Tisha say? What opens to the NFT if OpenSea goes away? It's still recorded on the blockchain. So it'll still be in your MetaMask wallet. It'll still be on ERC um Etherscan. Like you'll still be able to. Uh, connect to your NFT somehow. So if MetaMask goes away, you can go to Looks Rare and upload that NFT, create your profile, and upload that collection onto Looks Rare or any of these other NFT platforms. You'll always have the only way that you'll uh, the only way that you'll be able to um, I lost my train of thought. The only way that you'll lose these NFTs as if the blockchain goes away, which Ethereum is not going away. Knock on wood. <laughs> Nothing surprised me after what happened with Luna uh, a month or two ago. So, but Ethereum's not going away. So, um, it's too he heavily utilized. It's the second block, second largest, most valuable blockchain. Um, but yeah. Yeah, so you'll be safe even if the platform goes bye-bye. Like, you'll still be able to access those NFTs, like, directly on the blockchain. Like, you can pull them. Like, if I went to um, Etherscan, which I ain't going to do right now, but if you pull up Etherscan, you can drop your wallet address into Etherscan, and you can see your assets in there. You'll be able to see um, your NFTs in there. Um, iPhone says, can you do this on Visual Studio too? Um, I've not used Visual Studio. I don't know what that is. If you can unmute yourself, is that like a, um, application where you create art? If it is like, yeah, you can create the art anywhere. Um, 
you can create the art anywhere and you can once you have it saved on your device you can upload it from anywhere so he says yes it is in a way okay yeah once you have the art created digitally and you have it saved you can upload it from anywhere you can upload it and um and create it into an nft just like we just did like i i've had these um ai generated pieces for probably a year now i just hadn't uh uploaded them to OpenSea, but i figured you know why not i'll do it with this demonstration um so yeah you can you can you can do that from any like art application but yeah this is uh yeah this is pretty much the gist of it man oh i do want to show y'all what it looks like to sell so i don't have ethereum in my wallet if you have ethereum in your wallet and you are looking to place the item for sale i'm gonna show y'all how to do that um it's likely gonna tell me i ain't got no money um and I was going to send the Ethereum to this wallet, but I don't want it to take up too much time because we could be waiting some minutes for that Ethereum to come to my wallet. So once you're on the item that you intend to sell, like I want to sell this Genesis block one, all you do is hit sell, right? It's going to start interacting with, all right, well, before that, I could come here and say how much I want to sell it for. I want to sell it for one Ethereum, right? Y'all let me know if y'all still following. I didn't lose y'all anywhere, right? I want to sell it for one Ethereum. One Ethereum is $1,500 now. Okay. Okay, Eve. All right. So I want to set how long I want this thing to be so in, uh, on the market for. I'm going to say three months, right? Starting today, ending October the 16th. So... And you remember I told y'all about the transaction fee, the 10%. You can verify it here to make sure that they're going to be charging that 10% and giving you that 10% back every time it's sold. Now, OpenSea charges their own fee of 2.5%. So all in all, when an item is sold on OpenSea, uh, the person that's selling the item expect if they were selling this Satoshi Genesis block uh, NFT, a 12.5% uh, deduction from the overall value which you would get because the creator is getting a cut of 10%, which is me, and then OpenSea getting a 2.5%, right? <clears throat> you could also come here and sell uh, multiple items at one time. So I could go here select sell as a bundle name name it whatever i want to do give it a description say this is a one of one rare most valuable blah 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 whatever i wanted to say right then i come here and i'll add that second genesis block that i just created and then i could sell them as a bundle but for now i'm gonna leave that off and i'm gonna hit complete listing so now it's gonna interrupt interact with the metamask wallet it's gonna pop up give me a little fox <clears throat> they gonna say bro you ain't got no money in there so bam it says insufficient funds so currently gas fees aren't too bad but for me to initially place um so for me to initially place an item for sale in the collection there's a initialization fee and that's what this fee is right so after i pay this 16 dollars or whatever it's gonna be from then on every item that i place for sale will not charge me to place for sale it's just that one time so for me to like fully uh, give the collection its life 
like I would have to pay this fee, which is bouncing between $18 and $16 right now, which I don't have in here. But you would confirm it, approve the item for sale, and then you would confirm it again and it'll prompt you like two or three times for do for doing so, right? We're not gonna do that right now. It's dropping though. If y'all are doing it, that's all it takes. Once you, you do that, every item in your collection, you'll be able to add and place for sale for free from then on. Just like that. But we're gonna reject it because we we broke. We broke. We ain't got no ETH in this wallet because I just created it. But yeah, that is how you um, that is how you create a collection. That is how you add uh, items to your collection. I showed y'all also how to edit if you needed to go back and edit items on the collection. I uh, also showed you somewhat how to sell that item what it would put, like potentially cost to place that item for sale or that collection uh, for sale. But yeah, let me scroll back to the main page. But yeah, that is that is the gist of that. Um, let me know if y'all got any questions. Did y'all get stuck anywhere? Did anybody place an item for sale? Um, and if you did, Give me a thumbs up in the chat. Give me a yes in the chat. Uh, if you, you're going to wait on it, then that's cool. But um, yeah, just let me know if y'all got this far to where you actually have an item, um, you know, a, a collection created. And if y'all don't mind, drop uh, some names of your collection in the chat. I'm going to pull them up and I just want to see what y'all have displayed. It, like if it's art, like it might be, you know, pretty dope to just see what type of art that y'all have. But if it's just like a, um, you know, just a tester, like fine, that's fine. I'll still pull it up. I just want to see if y'all follow the loan and I, I want to see if y'all uh, actually got something out of doing this. And like I mentioned before, um, like there's going to be so many and there already is, there's going to be so many different ways that you can, you know, implement NFTs within business. And likely many of y'all are a business minded, like y'all in this group. So y'all are likely um, have that entrepreneurial like spirit. Um, so there's going to be many ways that you can utilize NFTs and knowing how to, you know, populate your own NFT and create your own collection. Like that could save you a thousand dollars from somebody else showing you how to do what I just showed you. Like somebody will come hit you across the head and be like, yeah, I, I create your collection for you. I put it on OpenSea for a thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? Or more, you know, but now you know how to do it um, yourself. You know, I like cutting out the middleman as much as I can. So Matthew said, going to create some digital art. Can you do this with music? Yes, you can. Yes, you certainly can. Like Snoop Dogg has practically mixtapes on OpenSea. Let me see if I can pull some of his stuff up. I don't know if it comes up as Snoop Dogg. But yeah, so like this, I think this collection here, yeah, like you can literally play. Y'all hear that? Yeah, so like you can, okay, y'all can hear it. <laughs> I can hear it, but because <laughs> it's in my headset. But yeah, it played. You can actually hear the music. Like this is an actual song. Might be an album. I don't know. I don't own any of them. But yeah, you can create a whole album. Like if I, I'm telling y'all, if I was actually like really talented in music, like I tell this to everybody I know that is in the music industry. 
Like you need to be creating your music as NFTs. Like this is how you secure ownership before the uh, the the uh, what's the name of the doggone things? The industry comes in, you know, places ownership over all of your your um, your music. So these record companies, right? So yeah, but this is how you secure ownership first. Like anybody that's in a basement or in the closet making music. Like they should be putting their music into NFTs, like creating them as NFTs. Because for one, it's going to give you exposure. Like it's not a lot of people creating NFTs as music, right? It's not a lot of people doing that. And um, let me see something. I might be able to pull some. Yeah, music. You can pull up the category of all the collections that have NFTs that are music base right so yeah, it's a bunch of them here this is snoop's other uh other drop that he had that plays music like y'all can't hear it like y'all mentioned before but yeah you can yeah and it, it's it's so it's so many things that you could do and don't like don't let this class go to waste if you plan to um you know, get into the NFT space and actually create. Like, like I mentioned, I wish I was more talented. Like, I got AI generated art. Like, some of it comes out pretty dope, though. But if I could actually paint, everything would be an NFT. If I could actually like do digital art, like it would all be an NFT. If I could make music for real, I used to make beats when I was younger. But I might get back into that. Maybe I make some beats. And- them as an nft i don't know but um but yeah man um i'm glad y'all came here this evening man i hope y'all you know actually will utilize what y'all learned today as far as like creating a collection um we still got some time though because i want to show y'all how to add because i mentioned it earlier how to add another network to your MetaMask wallet. So remember I told y'all that um, MetaMask is a multi-chain wallet. And Tisha says, would you say that selling the NFT is basically a different format for song distribution, like streaming format, CD? Yes, most definitely. But, But it gives you complete ownership. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm gonna tell you like, these record companies, they getting smart about NFTs. Like they're likely going to put clauses in people's contracts and saying, Hey, you can't create an NFT collection. And if you do, we get 70%, you get 30. Nah, nah. uh -uh. (laughs) Uh-uh. So like people who are like up and coming right now, nah, put all your music as an NFT to ensure that you getting like all that music that you know your your day ones day one fans love before you make it mainstream like you can continue to get royalties from it um while it's sitting there on the blockchain like and being sold constantly like beautiful it's a beautiful thing with nfts i'm telling y'all but back to what i was saying um Tisha says, so if you own the copyright yourself, then you're good. Yeah, most certainly. Most definitely. Like, I'm not a, I'm not um, into the, like, the specifics on the legality re- relating to everything, but if you create it, you're not under contract with anybody else, um, and they specify that you can't create NFTs without giving them a cut, create it deploy it make a collection make you know create a solid you know what i'm saying royalty system for yourself don't rely on system to create royalties for you you know what i'm saying so but let me go back because i want to show y'all how to and this is a little off the nft tip but i want to show y'all that you can add uh the polygon network and remember that fee that it costs to place an NFT for sale, 
you don't have to deal with that on the Polygon network. So what I'll need y'all to do is, I'm gonna pull this up. I had it pulled up earlier. So we're gonna pull up, you know, this, this is what we'll be doing, but I'm gonna pull up that MetaMask wallet again. So click on your little icon to your extension, hit MetaMask. <clears throat> right and you can see it here uh on this this little like image of the metamask here you can see all the different networks that they have most of these are test networks but we're gonna go and click this little drop down under ethereum mainnet and we're gonna hit add network right i hope that didn't okay let's pull this out we're gonna pull that go back there because i want y'all to see that pull this up and we're gonna scroll down we're gonna change the network name to polygon mainnet and y'all just follow the steps on the left, everything that's displayed here, y'all wanna uh, put over here also, HTTPS, Polygon, dash RPC. Let me know if y'all can see that also. If it's too small, let me know. Chain ID, name it Matic. Currency, whoa, no, chain ID is 137, my fault. One three seven block explorer HTTPS polygon scan dot com and hit save. Bam! Now we got the polygon mainnet. So now, if you wanted to create gas free NFTs, where it doesn't cost you anything to place it for sale, place it, do anything with it. You can put it on a Polygon network, right? And to do that, and I'll show y'all real quick how to do that. So we have the Polygon mainnet set. You can switch it back anytime to Ethereum if you need to. But we have it set on the Polygon mainnet. We're going to come back over here. We're gonna go back to OpenSea, right? We're gonna go, let me see. All right, we'll leave that be. We'll come here and go to my collections, right? And we'll, we'll create a quick collection real quick. Hit create collection, put all your images in. We actually not gonna create, I'm gonna just show y'all where y'all have to change it. Scroll down here, switch to blockchain, select Polygon. Bam, you can switch the tokens that Polygon has. There's only a few. And bam, now you have a gas-free collection. So you'll just do all the steps that we did before and create that collection. But we're not going to do that. But yeah, it's as simple as that. Um, Y'all got any questions? Um, I actually want to open it up here. We could talk about anything crypto related, um, anything NFT related, any questions y'all may have, comments, things that's like y'all don't completely understand about crypto, anything. So right now, let's jump into my uh, Ask Me Anything session. And if y'all don't have any questions or comments, then we're going to save it for another crypto day. Um, but like I said, I hope y'all learned something today um, with doing this and it's something that y'all be able to utilize in the future now that you have some experience in doing it. Um, and yeah. Got my little, what is this? Let me change that.
iPhone says, what do you look for when buying NFTs? All right, so let me see. If I can make a checklist, right? When buying NFTs, it has to, uh, let me, I'm going to break it in a couple categories categories right if i'm buying a nft for the long term like i'm holding it as if i was like holding like bitcoin ethereum something that's like a long-term investment it has to have a few key like things within it or mechanics right it has to have some form of utility unless it's like a rare art piece by this by basquiat or something or from beeples like Unless it's just art, if it's not just art, then it has to have some form of real world utility outside of it just being a profile picture image art. Like it has to provide some type of, or it, it could also provide some type of like passive income to me, or it gives me access to exclusive things. Like when I think about that, think of like, um, board api club i don't have a board eight but you have the you've had if you've had a board eight in the past year and a half two years they've been out like just for owning that board eight like you've likely gotten over a hundred thousand dollars worth of value when they were selling for 200 300 dollars uh initially or less than that because Ethereum was less in value then when they came out. But um, just holding one board eight, like the initial thing was you got it. You, uh, the utility was you got exclusive access to like parties and things of that nature. But then they came out with a second edition collection, which was the, uh, the Mutant Ape Yacht Club. So, you were able to mint one of those and they're selling, they were selling at their peak, probably like 30, 40 Ethereum. And you practically got that for free just for holding a board eight. And then they came out with another collection for the kennel club, which I think they were going for 10 to 15 Ethereum. So like I said, it has, if I'm holding a, if I'm looking into buying an NFT, it has to give me value beyond just me liking the way it looks unless it's a rare item by a you know well-renowned uh artist digital artists or just artists in general like that's gonna just hold weight just because of who uh who created it right so now on the other side or the on the other spectrum I also buy NFTs just because I want to flip them, like for trading purposes, right? If there's a collection, or uh, and even even some of the collections that um, that do have a lot of utility or have uh, or have really dope art, like I'll still flip them. Also, I'll likely uh, flip one of them so the strategy that most people do is when you go in to buy an nft or in a, inside an nft collection you don't never buy one of because one you need to flip so you can get your money back initially in um so you can get your money back at at a minimum right and get a little profit at minimum and then you hold the other one to see if the collection value rises so that's the strategy that most uh, NFT collectors or traders do. They at minimum they buy two. They mint two of them. Some people buy three initially, and they sell one in hopes to cover the cost of their investment over two or three of them. So, yep, just like they just said, kind of like trimming exactly. So you want to get your investment back and a little bit of profit at minimum when trading. So. But like I mentioned, some of these um, NFTs, they may have a lot of utility, but I still want to get my 
my profit, my, my initial investment back. So I'm going to flip at least one in the collection, even if I intend to stay in that collection and keep it long term. Like, that's just the name. That's that's just the way I play the game. And most people who are investors or traders and NFTs. Now, you also have like the meme, like memification of N NFTs too. Like last month, there was this theme in the NFT space where they had these little ugly goblins. It might be two months ago now. And they came out of nowhere and they literally would have these Twitter spaces and they would just sit there and sound like goblins on, <laughs> on the Twitter space. They wasn't making any sense, but it got, it gained a lot of traction. They was extremely popular and they ran up to like five, six, seven, and maybe eight Ethereum. And they likely were worth nothing, honestly. But so there's a lot of memification and you can jump into these NFTs and get a quick flip if you're early into them. So um, those are like your, your um, I would call them shit coin, like in co comparison to like your uh, meme tokens or meme cryptocurrencies. So you get in those and you flip them immediately if you can. But um. But yeah, I hope that answered the question. So I look at it in different ways. Like it's different aspects and how you trade or invest into NFTs. Right now, it is very difficult to uh, to make money in the NFT market. Uh, you you have a lot more risk because the market is like doing terrible. Um, the Solana blockchain is actually doing better than the Ethereum blockchain with NFTs, uh, for one, because well, the Ethereum gas fees aren't as bad as they were uh, before the, the market dump. But people are still sliding over to the Solana blockchain and uh, they're utilizing the Solana blockchain chain to trade NFTs and they, they're gaining a lot of popularity. Um, thank you. One more question. What you got? Go ahead and drop them. You can unmute yourself. Like I said, like I'm, I'm here. Like we can talk about NFTs, crypto, whatever y'all want to talk about. Okay. Can you go more into details about whitelisting? So y'all give me one sec, one sec. So uh, the concept of whitelisting is, so I don't know if y'all notice in the Discord, I'm going to see if I can pull up uh, the Discord real quick. Y'all don't mind me. I got like a thousand Discord servers. So within the Discord though, right we have we have a lot of tools in here um but i drop a lot of whitelist opportunities within the server uh here but i'll give y'all some you know some a better understanding of what these whitelisting are so most of these collections right they have um uh, i'm gonna open this up so yeah, most of the NFT collections, they have, uh, you know, early on, like it was very difficult to get whitelisted. Like you had to go into a Discord server and literally just talk to random people, help people. Like you had to like assist the, the NFT project as if you were a worker and people will be in these servers for like 12 hours a day, just trying to get whitelisted for these opportunities. This is when uh, the NFT um, market was like booming and people were doing it. Like people were actually paying people on Fiverr and these other like paid service programs to uh, get people 
to uh just grind in the Discord server so they can get whitelist. Um, but those times like you still see some servers like that that require you to interact in a NFT server a lot just to um just to gain a whitelist. But nowadays, like a lot of these uh these NFT projects, they rely on this pro this platform called Premint. And I'm gonna warn y'all, because I gotta do more research about it, but Premint was recently uh hacked. Um, I'm gonna do more research about it. So for the time being, don't click on these links. I'm just telling y'all that now. But until I give y'all some more feedback and say, hey, they're good to go now. Or we'll find another location to get these whitelist opportunities, right? But for now, pre-mint, um, they were hacked recently and people had like $375,000 worth of NFTs uh, taken from them. I read that right before we got on the class early. Um, but yeah, so, but now these projects use platforms like Premit to create a like service to where all you have to do is follow their Twitter, follow their Discord server. Like they have a prerequisite or checklist that you have to do. And once you've done that, they'll put you on a raffle to be eligible to mint one of the NFTs that they're dropping. So it's not as difficult as it was before. Four. and um what they also do is this with whitelisting so if you're in a project say like um oh let me scroll through here so if you're in a project like i'll put a ton of them up here so say you were in this this project here no nah, this crypto okay this is going here because this example i want to tell y'all so like if you had a little chimp, right? That's an NFT project. If you already owned a little chimp, sometimes you'll see like a new up and coming NFT collection collaborate with the uh, 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 already established collection. And that'll give them guaranteed access to pre -bend. They'll still have to go through a raffle, but the raffle will only have to deal with the people who are holders of that nft that that's that's already established what this one says is for non-holders but they usually have one that'll say like little champ holders and this is their pre -mint link so if you hold the little champ you'll be able to go on the pre -mint link do the steps and you'll be eligible to receive access to this crypto billia uh nft drop right but um yeah, whitelisting is just giving you, uh, in most cases, a guaranteed like uh, benefit of minting a NFT. So, like, it, it guarantees you the option to mint the NFT if you if you choose to do so, right? Instead of dealing with gas wars, where, and when I say gas wars, a lot of times. If it, an extremely popular NFT collection goes on sale, um, you'll have, or oh, if it goes and it has a mint date, that day you'll likely see uh, if they don't do any whitelisting or something like that, and it's a public sale, like gas fees will go crazy. Like I had the issue with that when, uh, when Board 8 dropped the other side metaverse nfts i've never seen gas fees that expensive before and um gas fees were literally like three ethereum minimal to mint a nft that cost i think i think those nfts cost uh i think they cost like two were they were like two ethereum at the time or ethereum and a half so it was like maybe three four thousand dollars for the NFT itself. And then the gas fee was like three Ethereum. So the gas fees cost more than what the actual NFT was. So I ended up not in that. But 
I was like, there's no way I'm going to do that. But that saves you when you have a whitelist opportunity. When you're whitelisted for a uh, NFT collection, it saves you from gas fees because everybody won't even have the ability to mint. Like they won't even have access to mint. But uh, I hope that I hope that answers your question um, relating to whitelisting. So, so how hard is it to mint an NFT, including energy wise? I'm not sure what you mean by energy wise. I'm not sure what you mean. Gas, the gas fee. So it's it's not difficult to mint an NFT. Um, I wish I had an example. I could show you uh, what uh, a collection that's minting right now. So how hard is the mint NFT with gas fees included? Um, you won't see any NFTs that have like gas fees included because that's the transaction that you have to interact on blockchain. So most NFTs, when you go to mint, right? They uh most most NFT collections they actually have a website like we did like to this evening we did like a like you know a straight to market concept for creating an NFT collection most projects that make it like a an event for minting their NFT they create a website and you actually mint the NFT from the website. So if you wanted to like buy the NFT or be the first to buy it, you would go to the website and you would mint it there. So when that happens, you'll pay the cost of what that NFT would cost. Say it costs 0.1 Ethereum, right? Which is probably 150 some dollars, right? I'm just guessing. But then the blockchain, itself is going to say, all right, you paid them, but now you got to pay these fees, which are the gas fees to make this process happen. So there's no, there's no way that you can have like gas fees included on Ethereum anyway, gas fees or any, any blockchain, honestly, gas fees included minting of NFTs. Like there's already always a, a process of fee somehow, some way, uh, but especially on Ethereum, like they may be a lot cheaper on other blockchains, but on Ethereum, I've seen, like I said, I've seen gas fees, like we just seen as low as, you know, 14. I've seen them actually like six bucks before, but I've also seen them three Ethereum worth <laughs> at the worst. Like that was the craziest I ever seen the gas fees at. So what was that? Oh, hold on. Hey, y'all, let me, we got some breaking news. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just got a, a Twitter uh, alert. Uh, they say that e Ethereum merge is going to happen tomorrow. Let me go look at Ethereum's price real quick. I didn't got on topic. I probably need to stop the recording. Huh? Don't say that. Hold on. Bro, bro about pull up. Pull up the chart. Pull I'm up the chart. Yeah, put it up right now. It just broke another high. <clears throat> well, that was today. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, just, yeah. It just broke another high. It's just doing it's corrective activity on a um, cover handle on the hour right now. Okay, okay. Yeah, it, it might be, you know, that might be a lie. Man, you remember what I said the other day? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. yeah, that could be a lie, but I'm going to leave this chart up while we sit in here just so we can see. And uh, hey, send, send me the uh, send me the article. I just seen it on Twitter, bro. So I can't, I don't know, man. It's gone. <laughs> you know, I get a thousand, thousands of alerts every day. But uh -huh. um, but yeah, if y'all don't have any more questions, whether it relates to NFTs, crypto, or if you do, go ahead and chime in. Like I said, I'm here and uh, we can uh, keep this thing moving. But if y'all don't, I have I hope y'all learned something from today um, and actually got to physically, you know, create and do something on the blockchain related to NFTs by creating these NFT collections. 
Oh, we got another. Hey, bro, you can ask me a thousand questions. One more. Can you suggest some blue chip NFTs in your portfolio? So, um, all right. So some blue chip NFTs, I would say anything Gary V has cre created. He has two collections. He has uh, V Friends and he has V Friends Part 2. Um, I have the version two of v friends um i like a collection that i have called dower dar sales they're fairly cheap now um they usually get whitelist opportunities and i'll type i'll type that in the chat real quick um and i'll drop these in the server also uh dower dar sales v friends um these are some NFTs that I foresee will sustain for the long term because they have, for one, Gary V is like, I don't know what you want to call him. He's like the, of the NFT spaces, he, he's like, he's, you know what I'm saying? If Gary V buys an NFT, like of, say he went and bought my Genesis Block NFT collection, right? People would literally come over here and be, and within se seconds, be trying to buy every one of my NFTs in that collection, like every single one, like immediately. He has a lot of influence in the space. So I would say certainly V friends. Uh, I like that with ourselves and that just me liking the, uh, the art. There's some little egg, egg looking, um, NFTs. Um, but, they have a um, real world uh, web two experience already, and they're venturing into web three more. So they also get white list, white list opportunities. Um, and these are fairly cheaper uh, NFT projects now. V Friends is a more expensive, but Dow and Dark Sales is another one. Uh, there's this collection called Toy Boogers. They, they have, um, they're fairly cheap now. Also, they, um, they have a animated series coming out with Time Magazine that's going to be on TV. Um, so Toy Boogers, and like I said, all these are fairly cheaper than what they were when the market was a lot bullish, but I, I foresee them sustaining, um, in the long term um what else I'm trying to think of some of the you know the cheaper ones that i don't know i'm gonna drop some in the chat man but those are the ones that come to the mind right now gonna be dope the msc one. Oh man man i wish i could show y'all i wish i could show y'all but yeah that one's gonna be major 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 hey. Uh, hey, um, real quick. I'm sorry to interrupt, bro. Um, do you know <laughs> what source it? <laughs> major, major. What'd you say, bro? <laughs> do you um do you know what <laughs> do you know what source you got? Uh, that it, pops up on Twitter. I think Mando. Mando says. Uh, yeah, I think that's who it was. That's somebody it was? named Mando or something like that, but okay. it could know. be a lie, bro. It like, could be. That's two hours ago. Yeah. Man, disrespectful. Yeah, it just popped up on my thing, so it could be a lie, because we would have seen this He gonna candle. make me go meditate, bro. He got my emotions going crazy. And we would have seen this candle go from here to up here. <laughs> Look, Lauren on here, too. I ain't even noticed. Why you do this to me, Lauren? Jeez. <laughs> I'm trying to go to bed too. And I was like, oh man, now you guys are going to have me up trading crypto. Mm, and then this guy got the hour up too, like just trying to show a potential morning star. <laughs> oh, let's go down. Jordan, let's, Jordan screaming in the 10 chat. Minutes, bro. 10 minutes. <laughs> look, let's go look let's at the one down. minute. Look, 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 look at the hour. Look at the hour on the R side and then go to the one minute. Oh my God. I need to go to bed, bro. Me too. What? You started this. <laughs> <laughs> Look, look at the one minute. Look at the RSI. What hey, the <laughs> Jordan say ETC ain't been caring about nobody. Yeah, hey, that's a fact. Ain't been caring about nobody life for real. 
That thing uh, just been running. I swear. <laughs> Disrespecting folks. Hey, it's, I ain't gonna lie, it slapped me earlier. I thought I was just gonna get in and be like, yeah, it's gonna go back down. I I came back to my car. I was like, yeah, hit my stop. <laughs> he said it hit my stop loss. He said, you should see the new doge. <laughs> Bro, for real. <laughs> and then you're gonna applaud him behind this nonsense. <laughs> what a saying, guy, man. I can't with y'all too, bro. <laughs> I'm done. Oh my god! Look at that. Yeah, at least, that, that thing was moving. <sighs> but yeah, it's I'm holding gonna, this team, bro. I'm gonna close this thing out, and we can stay on here. But I'm gonna go ahead and close the class, um, okay. bro. Like I said, me? close the tra- My bad. I'm sorry. You good, bro? Like I said, I appreciate y'all coming, man. I, I appreciate y'all tuning in, and I hope y'all utilize the skill. And uh, don't let nobody else try to charge you to do this. Like you can do it yourself now. Um, you can create your own NFT collection. So uh, give me some feedback in the chat. Um, I want to continue doing more interactive like classes like this where y'all actually see us and actually do something. Now that we have more of a foundation of, you know, the crypto space and NFT space and we can build upon it. So, um, yeah, just give me some feedback on the chat, what y'all like, what y'all like to see improve. Uh, I like to hear that a little bit more so I know what to work on and get better at this. Um, and yeah, man, just hit me in the general chat. If y'all still, if y'all have questions later um, that, that y'all just can't figure out relating to what we just discussed this evening, like hit me in the DM, hit me in the uh, crypto chat, anywhere, find me. I'll assist you. If I don't know, Yo, I'll help uh, you figure I'm it sorry. out. Can you can you put the one minute on? <laughs> I'm gonna get your screen. It's gonna make me uh more uh calm right now. Oh man, <laughs> my screen. There you go, bro. I got you. I, think, I, got I, think, you. Hold on, I go back. I think yours is lagging. She's lying to me. Wait, hold on. Oh, you at? Oh, you looking at ETC? I'm looking at Ethereum. Uh, she's not an ETC. She's in Ethereum. Who, me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm in Ethereum. I'm but Jordan was, back. Jordan was yelling about ETC. Okay. Hold on, wait. Hold on, wait. Y'all trading Ethereum? There, Jordan, hold on. What he what he doing in ETC? Look, y'all trading Ethereum. going for calls? Y'all trading it's Ethereum God. in the tech chat while yes. we in class? No, y'all wrong. no, no. We waited to the end. I waited to the end. Y'all wrong. Man. Y'all wrong. I ain't get the alert. <laughs> I tried to say something to you, bruh. He was sending smoke signal. <laughs> Wait, that thing moving down. Hey, so look, I'm gonna close this. Oh, Jordan stepping had oh yeah, stepping did had a up have an update. They had um they added the Ethereum <laughs> blockchain. That is the third round on the stepping uh Wait, what? on the stepping um platform so if anybody out there getting they they steps in like i do every night um yeah stepping is on ethereum blockchain now. but yeah we're gonna close the same let me end this thing uh <laughs> like i said give me some feedback in the chat man thank y'all for coming every week thanks <laughs>